Hi, it's Lee, and welcome to The Tesla Economist. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard for some people to get Tesla? Or understand why some investors choose to invest in other stocks, or even other EV companies, rather than invest in Tesla? Especially when Tesla looks like we might get something like a 10 or even 50 times return within the next decade or so. It's such a massive return, it doesn't take too much until your investment is enough to provide you with an early retirement. How can they be so stupid? Some of you might think. You may even explain it to them, but it's not going to get through to them. Some people are so sure Tesla will fail that they'll even short the stock. And time and time again, a lot of them lose big. There's even an ETF, Tesla Q, to short the stock. Now, as you know, I take quite a big interest in economics. I'm simply curious as to how the world works. Well, in the economic sense. And this is why I'm so fascinated about it. It's a curiosity as to why everything is the way it is, and it all kind of makes sense, in a sense. But it's not enough on its own. I actually read quite a bit on other social sciences as well to accompany this curiosity, namely history and psychology. And when you combine all these subjects together, I feel they provide a great outlook into how to invest. Of course, you need to understand business and numbers too, which is my passion and skill set. But anyway, there is a lot of psychology involved in investing. There's even a subject called behavioral economics, as we do have a very sick patient named Mr. Market. He's a manic depressant with a serious case of bipolar disorder. The problem is though, it's not actually one patient. It is an enormous collection of people with very different views, all affecting the prices in the market simultaneously with their fickle outlooks. This is why we study things like the madness of crowds. And it's very difficult to diagnose, or AKA predict the markets. But we have had a few rounds with Tesla, to say the least, watching massive dips occur. Whether through macro events or company issues, it feels like doom and gloom each time, and the stock price will totally tank and overreact. And this is the time when it is best to buy. Even though you possibly purchased shares when the stock was much higher, and you're possibly down, yet now you don't have the same conviction as when it was high, because the madness of the crowds have determined that it is no longer the gem you once thought. Yet you look at the financials, the demand, the product, the growth, the CEO, and everything seems to be doing well. What has changed? Nothing. The stock was on sale and has always recovered. But you may have let yourself follow the crowds. You might have listened to the media reporting the entire economy is going to collapse and we're going to go back into the dark ages. You've lost your confidence. Yet if you read the financial statements and everything else, then Tesla is still all on track to be everything you thought it could be. But the masses may have convinced you otherwise, so much though that despite a massive drop in price in the stock, you can't bring yourself to press that buy button to purchase more. You may already be down 30%. Do you want to risk losing more? You don't want to chase good money after bad. I do my best to ignore all that noise and block out the external factors. And in times like these, I'm here to restore confidence into the stock price. Not only that, you may even see me selling my stock when it is that low, only to convert it into a more leveraged position because it's just so cheap. And although I never tell anyone when to buy or sell, I do show you what I'm doing. And since I started this channel, I've only ever actually bought leaps on the dip we had this year and the dip last year. On top of that, I get bombarded with people telling me Tesla will hit $200 pre-split and all sorts. But what are the chances that they study the stock as much as me or have anywhere near as much skin in the game? How would they know? But back to the original question of why so many people don't understand Tesla or invest elsewhere. Well, we basically choose as to what we want to believe. These days, you can pretty much arbitrarily decide absolutely anything you like and find on YouTube or Google or social tons of evidence to back it up. You want to believe in aliens? No worries. Here's some videos on UFOs or an interview with a guy who got beamed up by aliens. Wow, aliens are real. Or whatever you want to believe, there is supporting evidence, for lack of a better word, out there, along with just as convincing evidence to the contrary. Hey, just a few years ago, the internet was starting to believe the world was flat again. But what happens when you show these people that the world is not flat, for example? It doesn't fit within their belief system, and they'll come up with reasons as to why your evidence is incorrect. You see, a belief system is also an investment. You may have spent a lot of time into building it up. You might even have a lot on the line of it being true. Perhaps years of so-called research, only to one day be told, it's all wrong. Well, no one likes that, so they actually avoid it. In fact, in psychology, there is even a term for it known as cognitive dissonance, which describes the discomfort experienced when two cognitions are incompatible with each other. 
In fact, not only that, further studies and research have even been conducted to discover that it literally hurts your brain to suffer from cognitive dissonance. However, it doesn't stop there either, as on the other end, there is the opposite, which is known as confirmation bias. And when you find sources that confirm your bias, the brain actually releases a pleasure sensation. Your beliefs have been validated and it makes you feel good. You weren't foolish at all. Other so-called credible people are also agreeing with you and think the same. Look, here's a scientist that agrees with you. Of course, the mainstream media are well aware of this too, and they therefore pander to both sides. For example, you may have one side of the media, for example, saying things like, Trump is bad, he hates America, and people will eat it up and think to themselves, yes, I never liked the look of him anyway. I could just tell he was a bad guy by laying my eyes on him. And on the other side, you might have the media saying, the establishment are out to get Trump again by saying he hates America. Then they think to themselves, yeah, Trump is trying to save people from the establishment. Of course they'll say these bad things about him. And thus the media have no credibility or truth and just want clicks. And sure, hopefully Elon can mitigate as much of this as possible with Twitter. Meanwhile, the media don't care as they're just getting tons of clicks either way. So they're serving you up your confirmation bias. And we know that headlines containing Elon and Tesla also get a lot of clicks too, especially for investors that missed out on Tesla, the investment of a lifetime. Headlines like fatality from Tesla autopilot or something. Then said investors think to themselves, oh, good thing I didn't invest in Tesla after all and feel much better about their loss. But anyway, I know my viewers know better than that to believe what the media tells them. You might even say, well, actually, that's where you're wrong because I know a guy who's really intelligent and he says Ford EVs are the future. Well, as it happens, intelligent people are often the worst as they are intelligent enough to find all sorts of ways of further confirming their biases. Also, be careful of people who are arrogant and overly confident. As they say, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Some people think they know it and understand it all, yet there is no such thing. This is also known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. The point I'm making is that we seek validation for our beliefs. We may even be too scared to look under the hood. And this is a very common mistake with investing. Imagine right now if you're a GM investor and perhaps you even have a decent stake. Are you going to enjoy listening to Biden telling everyone that GM is the leader in EVs too? Or are you going to actually go and research Tesla properly and be objective enough to realize, oh no, I'm gonna lose everything if I don't sell my GM stocks. This is very tough, but hopefully no one here is invested in GM. However, we are invested in Tesla. Now, I strive to be as objective as I can with Tesla. I think it's the ethical thing to do anyway when we're dealing with people's money. And sure, I may not be as popular as some channels, more catering to confirmation biases, but this is what I do and they do what they do. I am still whoever human, and I'll be honest, I was somewhat worried about the Chinese EVs at one stage, especially in the early days when the likes of Nia were popping up and even Porsche coming out with their electric cars. And I was worried about going through some cognitive dissonance, especially factoring in what we were hearing from the mainstream media. But nonetheless, this was investing, so I had to do objective research and didn't want confirmation bias. I had a reasonable amount invested in Tesla, enough that if I lost it all, it might set me back a few years to retire, but also enough that if it went as well as I forecast, that retirement would actually be possible in just a few years. So I did it. I researched the competition thoroughly. I researched every element I could think of involving Tesla, learned how batteries work and all the different types and what they meant, along with manufacturing, mining, refining, costs, etc. But it was tough initially looking into some of these Chinese competitors. The hyperbole was strong and sounding positive and backed up with statistics. So I took a look and what I ended up finding was that they were not only worse than what everyone was saying, but much worse than even I suspected. And the same with legacy autos. And I remember in 2019, around New Year's Eve, I even had my dad on the phone to me telling me he should sell some Tesla stock because the Volkswagen ID3 is out and the media were praising it as another Tesla killer. Of course, I was prepared for this and had already done the research and had put him at ease. The stock was trading at around $450 at the time, pre later split. I convinced him to hold. And I haven't stopped since. I research any new competitor. I go and drive their cars and test them out, like the BMW iX. It was not great at all, but had lots of smoke and mirrors to look impressive. And then you see the specs, the performance, battery size, and of course the price. And despite such a high price, they still lose money on them. I even drove the Polestar recently too. It 
drove just like an ice car. If it had made an engine noise, I wouldn't have been able to tell it was electric. They aren't Teslas. And I keep researching and researching. The Chinese aren't capable of ever getting a decent range due to using lower cost LFP sales. They can't use nickel sales as their prices will increase too much. And nickel is so much more scarce. Sure, some Chinese models do use nickel, but they sell very few. There's no way for massive expansion for them. And thus no way for the Chinese to offer long range vehicles. Whereas legacy autos actually have invested in nickel sales and can offer long ranges and vehicles like SUVs and trucks, which are very popular in the US. Whereas the Chinese can't touch that market as they'll only have about 100 miles of range. You also need to factor in self-interest. What are these people's motives? Self-interest is possibly the most important element of capitalism, at least up there with supply and demand. As Adam Smith said in his book, The Wealth of Nations, it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own self-interest. So when you watch a car review or something, what is this reviewer's self-interest? Can they give an honest, objective review, even if it's highly negative, or will the car manufacturers stop lending them cars to review? Can an interviewer be brutally honest, or will people stop going on their show? What's my self-interest? To be right. I try and predict the future of the industry, and I have to try and be right, as I literally put my money on the line. So I avoid confirmation bias, and I even seek cognitive dissonance and entertain Tesla bears, but it never takes me long to discover they lack credibility. I may not be as popular at times and not say what you want to hear, and I'm not the only one in the community that tries to seek genuine Tesla criticism, but we can't find it, at least nothing credible, of an argument against Tesla. I still keep checking the new specs of EVs, and there's no improvement, as to be expected, as they've had no breakthroughs. And Tesla are about to have their first breakthrough since 2170 sale, with the new coveted 4680 sale, be it somewhat delayed. But Tesla did have the likes of COVID to deal with, so it's understandable. In fact, it's such an incredible product that even if it took another five years, it would still be understandable. I think very few people even realize what Tesla have done with this sale. So seek truth as authority, not authority as truth. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.